Welcome back. This is Tom Siles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And this is my new toy from the Dollar Tree store. Yep, got that for a buck. Kind of cool. Changes colors, or you can have it a spe specific color. Kind of cool. Anyway, that's not what the show is about today. Turn some lights on here. Okay, what we're going to try to do is I had a couple of questions about programming the memories in the Grundig 750 receiver. Or if you get a new one nowadays, it's got the Eaton name on it, Eton name on it. And I must admit, programming the memories in this uh, radio can be a little confusing. Now, the memories are broken down. You have a thousand, 1,000 memories. And there's two separate memory types, I'll call it, of 500 memories each. And the first 500 are in page zero. There are 10 pages total. Well, actually, 11 pages total. There's page zero. Page zero, which consists of 500 memories with 100 assigned to medium wave, 100 assigned to short wave, 100 assigned to single sideband, and 100 assigned for airband and then 50 memories assigned to medium wave and long wave. hope that adds up to 500. So those are used, those uh, 500 memory banks are used when you use the ATS function on the radio, the auto tuning system function where you have the radio go into that mode and it searches for frequencies and as it finds a strong frequency, or it could be strong noise, it will store it in one of those memory locations. And like I say, there are five page zeros. And depending on what band you're in, AM, FM, shortwave, whatever, it automatically selects which page. So, for instance, in the past, I have done ATS functions in the shortwave, while well, I was in a shortwave band, and it's going through the heart, entire shortwave band and stored frequencies that it found, and then you can go back, go through those memory locations, and find frequencies that you think are interesting. Now, what you would want to do is, at that point, is if you found a station, or if the radio found a station that you like, um, say it's China Radio, and you want to save that because the next time you do an ATS function, it's going to write over those memory locations in page zero, and you're going to lose what you had. So you need to, well, either write them down someplace on a piece of paper or move them to another memory page, page. 1 through 10, or P1 through 10. And each of those have 50 memory locations for a total of 500 memory locations. So that's your 500 and 500. Okay, so now that we know the breakdown of the memory, the temporary memory, I call it, the 500 temporary memory locations, and the more permanent memory locations, another 500. So that's the difference. So say we found, I did an ATS function earlier before the show, and it's 2 o'clock or 2.30 in the afternoon, and it, there's not much on shortwave. So, but it found a few stations. So say here's one that we were listening to earlier. Now, I'm not really interested in that, but that could be one that I was interested in. And it's at 11.760 megahertz. So I want to save that. And of course, you can you can find the frequencies in different manners. You don't have to use the ATS function. You can manually dial a frequency. You can get a frequency off the internet that sounds interesting and 
key it in, get it that way. All you have to do is somehow and get the radio on that frequency. Now, once you've got it on that frequency, what you do is you press the M button here where it's marked memory underneath it. You press that button. And, and this is where the confusion comes in, in that you only have a short period of time before you have to move on to the next step. Otherwise, the radio will reset back to whatever function it was in before. So you got to keep moving when you do this, otherwise it won't get stored. So I have to keep careful that I don't talk too long because it'll jump out of the function I was in. So anyway, first thing you do is you press the memory button. Now once you do that, you can then press, see I did it too slow, see I jabbered so long that it resorted back to what it was doing. So let me just say what I'm going to do and then you can see it done. So I press the memory button, you see the memory location in the page, I'm still on page zero and I don't want to go there, I want to put it someplace out, so I have to think again in advance, where am I going to put this? So let's say I want to start storing the ones I'm finding today um, in page 2, let's say, let's say page 2. So I've got to go to page 2 first, and then I've got to select within that page, I've got to select one of the memory locations within that page, and I've got to do all of this in a very quick time. Okay, so we're going to try to do it. Memory, page, I go to two, um, memory, that was too slow, that was too slow. Okay, so let's try it again. Okay, we go memory, page, two, page, then got to select, <laughs> don't do slow again. See, this is why people have problems. you got to be really quick. It doesn't wait for you. So i got to go memory, page, select the page, hit memory, I mean, hit page again. The page is selected. Then I've got to select what memory location within that page, and then hit memory, and it stores it. So I need to... I'm going to go to page 2, and I'm going to store in memory location 5. Okay, that's the goal. So we're going to try it one more time. So we go memory, which is over here. I mean, the memory, excuse me. Uh, And then, of course, in right in the middle of trying to do this, my weather station tells me the temperature. Okay, here we go. Memory, page two. Memory, I mean page, excuse me. <laughs> Memory location, uh, too slow again. I, I can't, I just have to show you. I can't talk and do it fast enough. So, just watch. And let me look, let me check the camera, make sure I got it zoomed in. Yeah, let me zoom it in a little bit so you can see a little better what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. There. So I got it in memory page 2, location 7. So now, and then... Uh, when you're doing um, a number of frequencies, uh, it will autom one of the things it will do for you to help you get through that sequence in time is it will automatically update the last memory location. So I used memory location 7, so the next time I use that function to store the memory, it will be sitting at 8. So that, that helps. That eliminates one step. So now, if I go to um, memory, VM versus variable memory versus variable frequency, 
Okay, so now I'm in variable frequency, and now let's go to variable memory. We'll go to page, hit page, we'll go to two, page, and then we'll go up to seven. And there is 11.760. And as you can see, I had already used page two before I had stored my uh, I believe I stored my HF arrow frequencies in two, so I just wiped one out, and I'll have to restore it later. And that's the other thing you want to do is you want to have a notebook or something to write down what you're putting in memory, what it is, um, so that if you do a mistake, and because you're kind of in a hurry and you make a mistake and you store it in the wrong page, it wipes out whatever's there. So you need to have to you would have to go back and restore it, and if you hadn't written it down, you wouldn't know what it was. So that's how you do it, and you can see it's not easy to do. And it's one of those deals that you just have to you have to teach yourself how to do it so that you can do it quickly because it does not wait for you, and it only gives you like three seconds between steps before it aborts and goes back to whatever mode it was. So I hope I have illustrated how to do this. Um, you'll probably have to watch this video over and over again and when you watch it the second and tenth time just go to the period in the video where I do it without talking because trying to talk and push the buttons at the same time I, I can't get it done fast enough before it resorts back to the default mode it was in before. So it is not easy when you're learning or you're trying to explain it to someone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. It's not, um, but like I say, it's, it's like a lot of things. Once you've gone, it's another question I get about programming memories is programming memories in scanners. That can be a nightmare too. And I have resorted to, you know, on my scanners, except for the uh, ones that don't have the capability, if my scanner has a computer interface, I use software to program it. Because what you typically want to do in a scanner is you want to put in the frequency and then a little alpha tag about what that frequency is and getting all that stuff in can be confusing. The Bofang radio is another one that confuses people how to program it. Again, I gave up on my Bofang, bought the little programming cable and got the free software and that's how I program it. This one, there is no computer interface to do that with. So you have to rely uh, on your manual method. Now, another radio is the Sanjian uh, ATS-909X. It is very difficult to program the memories. And the reason I say that is because it has the capability of storing alpha tags so that you can put in uh, China radio so that when you tune, tune the radio, it will show on the display that alpha tag. China radio, or I don't know how many, I think you maybe have 12 characters or something like that. But sitting there and punching all that stuff in using the keyboard, because you don't have an alphanumeric keyboard, is very tedious. And I don't know if I would attempt to show somebody how to do the programming on that radio. So I hope I got through this and answered the couple of questions I got about programming of the memories on the Grundig 750. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. If you learned anything, please give me a thumbs up. There won't be too many of those. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We're finally starting to get our membership up. Uh, I don't know what the why we had that period where we were not growing at all. Probably due to videos like this, anyway. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.